got this horse, this really nice saddle, and uh, let me use him. So, as a clinician, you know, well, actually, at our house, we call clinicians clinicians, you know, for fun, because most of them take themselves so serious that, you know, they think, well, anyway, it's just really not that serious. It, it just, it's just not. So, but the job of a clinician in a, in a demonstration like this is to make sure the horse is as good or better when the owner gets him back. It is not, it's not for our ego, like I could run him around here. He, he wants to be with you. First of all, I'm the only thing in this round pen. He would want to be with anyone in here, not just me. And so right off the bat, he wanted to hook on this morning. He wanted to be with me. So if I needed to move him around and, and get him to hook on, I could. But why, why do that to him when he's trusting? I mean, do what needs to be done. When you step into a round pen, evaluate, first of all, again, thinking about what your ultimate goal is with the horse. For some people, they want a bronchi horse. They want to take some of this gentle out. I don't think you can take gentle out. It's hard to put gentle in, but I don't think you can take gentle out. But, so, they don't want this. They want a bronch, right? My son is kind of in that stage of his life right now. The harder they buck, the better. I'm like, I never want them to know they can buck. So my approach is different than his. But, so he, this horse wants to be with me. So we talked earlier about, um, I, I grew up being a very goal-oriented person. My parents, we set goals, and we worked toward it. And through my yoga practice, um, and my horsemanship practice, I've changed that up a little bit. I still have an overall goal of what I want and what my job is, but the little, the little steps, the little pieces that get me there, I let go of those. There's a horseman who, who has passed, who everyone reads and everyone actually tries to be, and, and he says, do less. Cut it in half. Do what you're doing and cut it in half again. And you don't, people say it, clinicians say it, I say it. It's hard to do. But we really, we really do, the less we do and take, like, take the stress off the horse and develop feel, the more advanced we become quicker. People don't have to even know what you're doing for you to communicate with your horse. And to me, that's what it's about. So I am not going to chase this horse around. I mean, how, how old is he, Verna? I don't know. He, he or Roger, he must be He's 11. 11. Yeah, I was going to say 11, 12 years old. We know, I mean, I know whose horse he is. I know he doesn't buck. I know he doesn't run off. So why do a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be done? When we do groundwork, we do enough ground. Kurt's uncle, Wilson Pate, he was a bronc rider, good cowboy, all around cowboy, steer wrestler, a hand, many times all around champion. His idea of groundwork is dragging his saddle from the tack room to the horse. <laughs> so, think about it. If you have the ability to ride a bucking horse, you, you can always help the horse way more when you're on their back than you can on the ground. Groundwork is very important. But don't do it just to be doing it. This horse doesn't need it. So I talked about goals. Um, we're not going to saddle him again because it took me way too long. I talked too long earlier to saddle him. So, but bridling. This is a good, good place to practice horsemanship. There's a saying, and everybody says it, the horse knows when you know, and he knows when you don't know. But it's true. If this horse knows that if I put the bridle up to bridling, and he takes his head away and puts it up here, and I follow it, and I start trying to shove the bit in his mouth. I, first of all, I'm causing a fight, and he knows he can put his head up higher than I can reach. And he, he's gonna win. And the other thing is, I just said that statement, horse does, the horse, I don't think, has any thought process about winning or losing. 
they're just doing what they're doing. They're, some of them are surviving, some of them don't want to be with you, whatever. They're just doing what they're doing. They don't care about winning and losing. We do. We put that on them. But if I let go of being focused on the task of bridling and shift my way of thinking to preparing the horse to be bridled, then I don't get in a fight. If, if my only goal, I can shove this bit in this horse's mouth. Well, I can back him up to the fence so he can't go any farther. I wouldn't care because this round pin, well actually, this prefer round pin would not collapse on you. If you're gonna have a round pin, buy a prefer. Because that is one of the safety features. If, if a critter runs into it, a lot of round pins that are, are round will fold in and they can just take this round pin and go and pretty soon you're in it. But the prefer can't do that. So, and I'm not sponsored by prefer, but they are the best. So, but we can do a lot of things to put the horse in a place where we can win. But it's not about that. So what do I know about this bit? I, and, what, and the horse. I know that the horse needs to keep his head where I can reach it. I know that the horse needs to open his mouth, work his mouth, to take the bit. So you see, I'm using both of my hands here. And this is a little bit better. I talked about this earlier too. And, and again, um, older horses. I, I do clinics at a home, the guest ranch, the home ranch in Clark, Colorado, and where women come and they ride the guest horses. And they're not, all of them aren't the softest things. And it can be a little frustration, frustrating doing a horsemanship clinic or taking one because you want certain things. But these horses have a job, and it's to keep people safe. And they have um, how many weeks? From May, from the end of May to the second week in October, they have different riders on them. Some of them balancing on the reins. I mean. Some of them good riders. So they learn to protect their mouth. They learn to be a little hard mouthed. And so we don't want to ruin their day and get after them too much for one clinic for us. So I guess what I'm saying is there are some horses, and at this age, there are just some things you learn to adapt. You just figure out, that's why there is no manual to horse. No horse and no person is the same. So what I want to do with him is maybe see if he, he, he's a little bothered about being bridled. So if the change I can help this horse with is maybe a little attitude. And, and that's what we work on at the home ranch a lot too, is getting their ears forward and changing his mind from being a little ill about putting the bridle on. So again, I know first I want to catch the horse's nose so I can keep it with me. I had him caught here. So if he goes to take his head away from me, I don't have to move my feet and follow him. I can bring him back and ask him from the pole, I can ask him to, um, and I actually like to keep my hand on the bridge of the horse's nose. I'm just gonna ask him to drop his head a little bit. Now, to get a horse to drop his head, you can't push down on the horse's head. So you just put up a feel, a little pat. Yep, that's right. A little, and when he gives a little bit, then I get still. I don't take the pressure completely off, or, or I take pressure off, but I don't take my hand off. So later we're going to be talking about a soft feel. And when we're riding, we want to get our horse bridled up and, and his head in a frame. We can get it going right here. This is a soft feel. When he gives and he wants to hold his head in this way and not take it away from me, he's gotten soft. This is a soft feel. So he's wanting to look. <laughs> but I can bring his head back. So then with my right hand, I just drop the bit down and I come down and I, I'm going to get my bit between my thumb. Oh, now he's ready to bridle. 
but then I'm not going to push the bridle with my left hand. I'm going to lift with my right hand. And now if he were to take his head away, I would not, I would not pull it over his ears until I bring his head back. And at home, we're very consistent. We do the same thing when we halter our horses. We're very consistent and we do the same thing and our horses halter and bridle themselves. They just know. They know when we put that feel up that they're going to be bridled. So again, just the, the change in my attitude, in my, in my vocabulary, in my way of thinking, it's not about bridling. It's about preparing him for the bridle. It's not about saddling, which we already did. It was about preparing him to saddle by getting his feet squared. And he squared up on his own. But every time this morning, since I put a halter on him, I squared his front feet up. This is his, when he gets square, this is groundwork. This is our kind of groundwork. With the halter on or with the bridle, we can get him soft, shift back, stop a foot, pick up a foot. Hey, you guys want to, well, I'll show you if, how many of you love your horseshoers? I fire horseshoers. Mm -hmm. I love my horseshoer. But, but there are a couple things. If a horseshoer ever, ever hits my horse in the belly with the rasp because he's leaning on him, he's fired. And if he ever drops his foot, he's fired. But you can help your horseshoer Say you're holding the horse, and he's leaning. And he's, he's, he's a smart horse that knows how to lean on a guy. And he's going to pick up this foot. I am so bad with my right and left, I'm sorry. So my whole life, I could never tell my right and left apart. So my dad taught me, Tammy, put your hand up. The one that makes the L is your left. So for years, years, I'm like, cool. And so one day Kurt said to me, well, what if you do this? <laughs> the L changes. So it totally messed me up. Anyway, I'll put this foot, that foot. So if I want to pick up his left foot and the, and he, the shoe where he's leaning on it, all I have to do is shift all the weight onto the right and lightening it and there. I just picked it up for the shoe. So when we start understanding those things, and how a horse works, it helps us in the saddle. So I just started to say, every time I have uh, made contact with this horse, any time I've asked him to do something, I have, I have gotten real square in his front feet. And this is how we catch a horse. A horse isn't ready to catch if he's light on one front foot. So this is just like showing a steer. You can place those feet anywhere you want. And you can place the back feet too. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But every time, this is his good place. When he's square, we're golden. And that's how I want him to be, to catch him, to halter him, to bridle him, to saddle him, and to get on. So I don't know how many of you were here earlier, but Kurt, I tell everybody that that I really taught her everything he knew, that I just let him do clinics all those years, which isn't true. But he came up with a way of explaining kind of our way of thinking about horsemanship in um, a vitamin C approach versus a penicillin approach. So when, what are you doing when you're taking vitamin C? You're, you're building your immune system. You're getting strong. You're preparing for that plane trip so that you don't get sick. You're, you're thinking ahead. When you're taking penicillin, you're already sick. You're late. It's over. You haven't been getting enough sleep. You've been not eating right. Your immune system is down. It's late. So this is a great example. When I first started kind of thinking this way, I was taught to get on a horse, and, and actually, I mean, this is old school. The cowboys used to call it chicken a colt. 
So they bring the head around, shorten that inside.